Sorting data in Microsoft Excel 2007 is extremely straightforward and can provide a very useful way of looking at data. What I've got set up here is a simple spreadsheet with student grades. So I have 10 students listed by first name in column A and surname in column B. And then I have column C with the maths results, English in D and column E is their science. And in the final column, column F, we have the average score for each student. Now at the moment, none of this data is in any particular order at all. It's all entered quite randomly. And what we're going to do is look at one way to very simply sort the data, and then a second way of sorting data that takes it a little bit further. So the first thing we're going to do is sort this data by the average score. So looking at the average scores, we can see they're all jumbled up at the moment. And what I want to do is to sort these so that they go in descending order. In other words, the highest score at the top and the lowest score at the bottom. Now, a mistake people tend to make when they're sorting is to click on the column that they want to sort. So click on the column heading at the top, the letter F in this case. Don't do that, because what that will do, if you're not careful, is sort that column into whichever order you want, but entirely ignore the rest of your table, which of course is going to end up with each of these students having the wrong average score on their row. So instead, click anywhere in that column that you want to sort. It doesn't matter whether it's the cell at the top or the cell at the bottom, as long as you're somewhere inside that column that you want to sort. And you'll notice that at the top in the ribbon, I'm actually in the data section of the ribbon, although there is also a tool for sorting in the home section. On the right hand side, you have sort and filter. But I'm going to show you within the data section of this ribbon, there are the three buttons that we're going to use, the A to Z, so sorting in ascending order, the Z to A, which is descending, largest at the top, smallest at the bottom, and then this advanced custom sort feature we'll look at later. So because I want to sort these in descending order, what I'll do is click somewhere in this column, click the Z to A button once, and that's it. Straight away we've now got our average scores filtered through from the top score at the top, lowest score at the bottom, and all the rest of our data has been sorted to match it, so each student is still on the correct line. Now that's one way of doing it, but if we have a look at these average scores, we'll see that two students scored the same, 83. And if we look along, we can see that those two students' names were Smith and Andrews. Now it would be a good idea if we could have those two students actually listed in alphabetical order, in which case, of course, Andrews would come first. So what we can do, rather than sorting our data just by that one column is we can sort it first by the average score and then for any duplicate entries we'll sort those by alphabetical order by surname. So how do we do that? Well we don't use this single column sorting feature instead we use the main sort button here so I'm going to highlight my table click on the sort button there which brings up this dialog box here. Now I can sort the table first of all by the average score, so I've selected that column there. It's taken this name from my header row, row 1, and you can see that there's an option here that's selected by default that says my data has headers. In other words, there are titles entered at the top of my table. So it's taken those titles and given me that as a drop-down list, so I choose average as the column that I want to sort by. The order that I want to sort these by is not smallest to largest. I want it to be the largest at the top going down to the smallest, so I choose that. But then once I've sorted this column, what I want to do then is to sort it by a next level. So I add a level, because once we've sorted by the average score, we then want it to sort it by surname. And those will be in alphabetical order A to Z. So there we are, we've done that. We're sorting our whole table by average score first of all, and then for any duplicate averages, we'll sort those by surname. So we click OK. We can see our average scores are all set up. They're greatest to smallest. And if we take those two students who had 
we can see that they have now been sorted into alphabetical order. So Hayley Andrews is listed first and then Bethany Smith. But if we notice further down, we have three students who have 73. And if we look along to see who they are, we can say that their surnames are Goodwell and Robinson. Well, those are certainly sorted into alphabetical order. G for Goodwell comes obviously before R for Robinson. But if we look at the two Robinson students, we'll notice that they are Sophie and Gareth. Now, really, because we have duplicate surnames, we really ought to have these two students then sorted by their first name in alphabetical order. So Gareth would come first and Sophie next. So what we'll do is we'll undo that sort we just did. We'll go back into the sort option. So our first level sort will be the average score largest to smallest. Our second level of sorting will be by the surname going in alphabetical order A to Z. But then we'll add a third level, which means once we've sorted the surnames out, if there are still duplicate entries, we'll then sort those out by the first name again in alphabetical order. So we click OK. There are our average scores sorted. Those are our three 73 entries. We can see the surnames Goodwell and Robinson are in alphabetical order. But we can now see that the Robinson students, Gareth and Sophie, are now sorted into alphabetical order by first name as well. So the first level sort was by the average score, the second by surname, because we still had duplicate entries, we've sorted it a third time by the first name. So that's the simple way of sorting a single column by using the A to Z or Z to A feature, and then a more complex method of sorting using several columns and several different layers to make sure that data sorted covers the whole table.